Thank you very much, Leanna. I, I really look forward to any association I can have with this place because this place changed my life. Uh, before I start on my speech, which is because I'm old, it's in 14 point on one page, if not that large, I got to say to Terrence, good catch on recognizing Ashley. Because I worked with Ashley's mom, and I would have given you up in a heartbeat at 8 o'clock in the morning. So it's good that, uh, that you, you came back and finished that. Uh, as Leanna said, I was part of the first graduation class, and uh, we were not in anything this nice. We were in a uh, former furniture store up the street, which is now called King Hall. Uh, back then we called it NCI, because that's what NCI was. And, you know, at the risk of sounding as old as Bob Berger, um, we did not really ride wagons to school. We didn't have to fix the wagon wheels when they broke. Uh, none of that was, was required of us. Um, but I do remember uh, we had one vending machine, and I was the largest person in the class, so whenever anything got stuck, they would come and get me, and I would shake the machine and hope it would fall out. <laughs> Sometimes you got two things to fall out, and that was my pet for shaking the machine. Um, I've been in your seat September 2005 to December 2007. I was in your seat. I received my MBA from Averitt through NCI, and it changed my life. I would not have the job I have now without the opportunity that NCI afforded me. At the time, I was 46 years old, had not been in a classroom, a college classroom, since I graduated from JMU, Go Dukes, class of 81. Um, I did teach school for seven years in middle school, which is really like dog years. That's like 49 years. Um, no, it was a wonderful experience. It made me understand I was not cut out to teach middle school. Uh, but it was the greatest job I ever had because... I've learned that every student in your classroom has value. There are some, especially in middle school, that may come that didn't meet their deodorant that morning, or they sprayed axe all over them. My son did that when he was in middle school. You can smell them coming 200 yards away. But each one of those students had value, and sometimes they didn't understand. So to those of you who are going into the teaching field, and, and obviously social work, uh, God bless you. Because this community needs you. We need what you bring in your skill set. Um, maybe I'll flash back here a little early. We always got excited when there were new things in the vending machine because that was dinner. Uh, Fig Newtons. I love Fig Newtons. We got excited when we had Fig Newtons. Um, you would pray that the professor would let you out 10 minutes early. Because that 10 minutes, you would dance like you were in a Coke commercial if you got out 10 minutes early. You get angry at your family. When they're going to the movies or going out to dinner or going on vacation because you couldn't do any of those things. Uh, you were locked and loaded for two years and it was hard to do it. Um, I did my homework after my kids went to bed. I had two kids, uh, one in elementary school, one in middle school when I was going through the program. And my son, who was the youngest one, several years later when he got to middle school, he decided on his own that homework was not in his future. He didn't like homework, to the point where he would argue with us as to whether he should really do it. And he looked at me one night and he said, I never saw you do homework when you were going back to school. And I said, that's because I waited for you to go to bed. And I did it at 11 o'clock until about 2 or 2.30 in the morning. And then you go crash for a couple hours, but you keep waking up because you're afraid you're going to oversleep. You, know, you wake up startled, look at the clock, you do it again three minutes later, and then you get up and go to work. And you do that every week for two or three years. You deserve to celebrate your accomplishment. I hope you celebrate your accomplishment. You deserve your victory lap. Um, this is Thursday. Celebrate through Sunday. Just, just celebrate. Okay? But you are not done. You are not done. Come Monday morning, you have a community that needs you. You have kids who need you. You have spouses that you have to reintroduce yourself to. <laughs> this community, your community, needs what you bring to the table. We need you to encourage and engage others. We need your example of dedication and hard work to be planted in others. We need your intellectual capital. Somebody had to explain, Bob explained it to me one time, this how smart you are. We need that here. We need your skill set. Soft skills, hard skills, all your skills, we need those in this community. 
Whether you're an educator or a social worker, there's a child waiting for you tomorrow that you need to impact. They may not know it. They may fight you on it. But they need you starting Monday. We'll give you till Monday. Somebody helped you get here, I'm guessing. It was either a spouse or a friend or a grandparent who looked after your kids or a neighbor who cooked dinner for your kids. I can relate to the microwave. My family lived two years on the microwave. We wore them out. We wore out the microwave. Um, there's somebody who got you here today. You didn't do this by yourself. You did most of it by yourself, but not all of it. It would have been very easy for someone to inspire you by, by supporting you, but also those who may have doubted you. And it's awfully hard to fight the urge to get that piece of paper and go back, like Julia Roberts, some pretty woman, when she shakes the bags, because she should, y'all are way too young. <laughs> um, there are adults in this community who need to see you and need to be inspired by you. They need to know that it's possible to work a 50-hour week, speak to your kids or kiss them on the forehead because they've already gone to sleep when you get home. But there's a light at the end of that tunnel. They need to know, the adults of this community need to know that this is possible. You are shining examples of what can be done. I had the luxury of being, I had the honor of being invited here a couple weeks ago when Senator Kane was here. And a, a phrase was used, and I may offend some folks, but okay. Uh, I don't like the phrase non-traditional. I don't like that. It sounds like we're different, you know. He's got a great personality, you know. Um, I don't like non-tradition. What I like is don't quit, never give up, keep going when you shouldn't keep going, when the energy is gone, but you keep going. When I was an undergrad at JMU, traditional, I was a traditional student, and tradition then meant that I had to be out of class between 12 and 1 so I could eat lunch and watch Young and the Wrestlers. <laughs> because if you watch Young and the Wrestlers at the student center, you met girls. <laughs> because that's what they're doing. And I needed all the help I could get. Um, so that's how I associate traditional. You're there because you're there. And there's nothing wrong with a, with a traditional trajectory. It's worked for a whole lot of people. But the dirty secret is anybody can go to school when they're 18. Anybody can go. They don't know what they want to do, and they shouldn't be expected to know that. But anybody can go when they're 18. Mom and dad are paying, or grandma and grandma are paying, or you've got a smart financial person like Sammy here who helps you get the money to go to school. Anybody can do that. Get out and get a job, and get married, and get kids, and then decide that you want to go back to school. Um, when I think of folks who do that, I think of these things. Dedication, determination, hard work, Managing your time efficiently, setting a goal and accomplishing that goal. If that is traditional or non-traditional, I don't care what label you put on it, but that's what we all should be doing. And the fact that you chose to come back to do this in not a non-traditional way, but in a guts way. It's easy to quit. It's easy to not get started again. But not only did you get started again, you finished. That's where your victory lap comes. I applaud what you have accomplished, and we are celebrating that moment tonight. But as thrilled as I am to be part of this effort, I cannot wait to see what you do starting on Monday. Thank you. <laughs>